I am so hyped to make this video. This is everything you need to know that was announced at the keynote for the FanFest for the new Final Fantasy expansion for 7.0 Dawn Trail. Let's dive right in. Yoshi B mentioned that he will try to get it out as soon as possible in the summer, but just keep in mind it's over the summer period. Naturally hedging for some leeway in terms of announcement dates here. Yoshi P firstly said that he knows based on the trailer, and if you guys haven't watched the Dawn Trail trailer, go watch the official one. I have a react on this channel as well. But he mentioned that he knows this is a very different vibe versus the traditional Ann Walker story that we are used to. Definitely a kind of like a holiday vibe. Just listen to the soundtrack, I think that's very evident. He mentioned that after going through the entire Hydaelyn Zodiac experience, it's time for a break. And in the background, you can see the boat that's traveling to a brand new continent, right? And Yoshi P confirmed that this brand new place that we'll be exploring is essentially the New World, a place also known as Tural. And reading the title here, it seems like we will help to determine who is Tural's next ruler as well. So alongside Elfino, Elise, and Arendville, the Warrior of Light will embark on a new journey to help in finding a new successor. There's also a rumor on this adventure we might stumble upon these gates of a city of gold in this contest for the next succession. Yoshipi also said that the scions that we know of will be divided into groups. He said the scions will be split into two opposing groups, but it's up to us to find out eventually who's our own allies and who's our so-called friendly rivals in this competition. He teased the crowd a little by asking the question who we think is the smartest amongst all the scions. I won't get into it in this video, I'll do a proper analysis separately. And he mentioned that the theme of the expansion is centered around discovery. And he said as usual, they have some surprises in store for us, so he said to keep our expectations high. And he jokingly said on stage, even if he said that we are just gonna give the Warriors of Light a summer vacation, no one would really believe him. There's definitely a plot twist somewhere, it's for us to find out. Might be related to some of the questions on screen here. What does the contest for finding a successor really entail? And what awaits in the new land of Tural? And what is the truth behind the City of Gold? I don't think the answer is Essience anymore. Actually on everyone's mind is what exactly is the new world? What does Tural entail? And to illustrate geographically, he starts with the broad overview of Eorzea, the map that we know of as of now. And the location of this brand new continent is towards the southwest. Starting with a tease, what is the brand new hub city? And the brand new city is called Tuliolao. Kind of rolls off the tongue after a while, but it's based in the region of Yok Tural, which is a part of Tural. And clearly this is the concept art that they have. And some eagle eye audiences out there, you might have noticed that the outline of the entire capital city is basically in the key art. The one that Yoshitaka Amano designed, the very first logo that you see at the start of this video. The first thing Yoshipi mentioned is that this entire capital city, you can notice that it's kind of backwards in terms of maybe technology or development. And Tuliolal is essentially the seat of the federal nation state that governs Tural. And we know that the ruler of this place is a two-headed Mamulja named Gulu Jaja. And he said that the Scions are participating in a contest to essentially find a successor to this current ruler. And he mentioned that this is not the only city that will be visiting in this entire brand new continent, the new world, but he'll leave it for a later date. He doesn't want to spoil us too much at this point in time. And they already have some working screenshots. This is essentially the new harbor of the capital city and he wanted to draw our attention to a few things. Firstly, the graphical improvements that is very visible in the screenshot, in-game screenshot by the way. He said that the shadows are way more defined and you will also notice a lot more objects being placed in the world. So it seems like they increased the object limit. Here's another example, a bit of like Hawaiian vibes, tropical vibes. You can see like the reefs and you know the shore and the coastline. But again, you notice the very much defined shadow. Seems like the vegetation are also better, but I'll dive into it in a separate video. He said this further into the city, away from the harbor. This is the marketplace where everything you know happens. There's a third screenshot, Tura Yellow at night. Again, you get some resort vibes here. Next up, he wanted to cover some of the brand new zones you'll be visiting. It's the new world after all. And he showcased this screenshot. This is apparently located in York Tural as well. That's basically the region where the capital city is based. And this zone is called Yuko Pacha. Might have totally butchered that, but you will notice like what's special to me is like those colorful mountains to the side there. And you mentioned this entire zone is home to people who are exceedingly large and also unusually small in nature. And in a long, long time ago, this used to be, you know, the heart of the giant's empire. But this empire now stands in ruins very far away from their glory days. He then showcased the very first screenshot of Uko Pachao. He mentioned that they spent a lot of time basically optimizing the atmosphere near the mountain. You can see a bit of a fog-like appearance here. That's definitely deliberate. He also mentioned that the shadows are way more defined. You can see it from this arc 
um, structure over here. But on top of that, I think the vegetation also looks way better. He didn't mention that, but it's something I noticed. Second screenshot, a different angle of the entire settlement and civilization. And just from the shape of the houses, you can tell this is kind of a unique civilization. And Yoshipi then officially called out that a new graphical upgrade allows them to do plants like that, right? Clearly defined plants with very special textures, way more defined textures actually. And he said this is only possible thanks to the new graphical upgrade. And this is the third screenshot that he showed of Yuko Pachal. And he said, look at the buildings, the texture on the buildings. I guess you can see even on the roof, right? There's this kind of like, can I call it grass-like, hay-like kind of texture. And the lighting really looks good. But he said that he will dive into more details regarding the graphical engine later. Another different zone called Yaktel. Yaktel is a very thick forest by origins. And you can access this from the capital city of Tuliolal by essentially taking this flight transportation over the southeastern mountains. And he said that this entire zone has two distinct levels. That's what the text is alluding to here, I think. So then this is foliage that the forest floor sees little sunlight. And I guess the upper part of this entire area, as you can see here, probably has a bit more civilization and structures. This is the home to the settlements of the Tural Throfgas and Mamuja. And it comes with cerulean ponds and springs as well. He said this is a photo at sunset and he said, look at the greenery, right? Look at the grass and look at the trees. Clearly, he's very pleased with the graphical upgrades and the ability they are able to bring with regards to vegetation. Second screenshot, this one is a bit more from a bird's eye view. This one naturally not at sunset. You can see a bit more of the fog in the background. He said they're brand new allied tribes, although he jokingly said, wait, why is the Namazu in front? He said we'll meet many of them, but he just wants to focus on one today for the keynote. In this case, the Pelu Pelu. So apparently the Pelu Pelu are always seen with their mask on and they have like unique mask. Their characteristics is they are natural entrepreneurs by trade. And Yoshi P jokingly said that they might try and sell you something when they see you. And apparently they are net exporters of tea, coffee, and mescal. He said on stage, that's a very brief introduction to Tural. They naturally have a lot of other secrets up their sleeves. And I'm sure we'll cover that on this channel. And now he wants to talk about the key features that's coming to the entire expansion in 7.0. And we got confirmation of the level cap increase from level 90 to level 100. We are now three digits, Warriors of Light. And actually he gave a shout out to everyone to which the Vegas crowd was very appreciative of when he said that, well, thanks to everyone, it's only possible we got to level 100 because of everyone's support. And no surprises to everyone, but there was still a very loud cheer in the Vegas audience when he said new jobs are coming. And just to be clear, not just one, he confirmed there will be two new jobs that's coming in the expansion. And he said he can't tell us exactly what the two jobs are today, but naturally you can expect the remaining fanfest to kind of give us a hint of what those are. And he confirmed that there's one melee DPS as well as a caster range DPS. And he said at this point he wanted to take off his jacket because it's getting really hot. And we all know from past fan festival, his shirt basically allows us to have a clue to what the new job is. To which Yoshi P then reveals he's wearing a mutant ninja turtle shirt. Naturally, speculations has arrived. I'll leave that for another video. It's confirmed that the core battle content will make a return. The stuff that we're familiar with, fates, hunts, treasure hunts, questing, side quests, they're all returning. There'll be brand new dungeons for you to adventure in. Naturally, also in its resplendent new graphical overhaul. And he mentioned that maybe they can share a bit more details at the next FanFest regarding these new dungeons. Of course, there'll be brand new enemies to fight, right? We can't fight Essians all the time. And that arc has kind of concluded already. And he said he'll just show us one of the bosses. And apparently this is one of the bosses that we are fighting. Kind of like a mythical dragon bird hybrid. And he said this is the legendary Valigar Manda. Duty support will continue into the new expansion. All the dungeons will come with duty support. So you can basically play this single player, right? And adventure alongside your favorite scions and companions. And he alluded to the fact that there actually is plans to add duty support to more content other than dungeon, but it's too early in the cycle. And maybe for another day, he'll share that with us. There'll also be brand new gears and recipes for us to basically craft and to collect. And you can see a bit of the vibes from all the characters behind here. Definitely more of a tropical, adventurish, jungle, trekking kind of attire. And he said in the 7.x series of the new expansion, there'll be new lifestyle content similar to, you know, them introducing Island Sanctuary as a lifestyle content to 14 in the 6.x patches. And your favorite PvE content types are all coming back. We have new variant dungeons, new alliance raids, the eight player raids that we're familiar with, as well as new ultimates. Yoshi mentioned there'll be brand new updates to PvP as well, new maps for all the content that we're familiar with in PvP. He also mentioned they won't neglect ongoing content that will continue to be refreshed. Blue Mage will continue to get love with updates. Hildebrand will also return for inconceivably further Hildebrand adventures, alongside new plans of deep dungeons as well as an update to the Gold Saucer. 
Diving into the graphical overhaul deck, something that he clearly is very proud of in terms of you know his team's uh, work and how far they have come. It was very apparent when he talked about the screenshots, he kept talking about how good things look right now. So the first key point he mentioned is that they don't want the graphical upgrade to just be object specific, like just to the characters or the objects on screen. They want it to be a screen-wide aesthetic appeal. So across the entire broad picture on your screen, you should be able to see it very evidently. They'll be introducing higher resolution textures and shadows, very apparent from the screenshots. And there'll be better material qualities, like you will notice it in certain metallic surfaces. And maybe I think even fabric, like cloth materials, will also look a lot more realistic. Firstly, you want to show us the new characters that will be appearing in our graphics engine, right? And you can basically see the comparison over here. And you can see over here, like this is a brand new overhaul. Like things are way more defined, right? They have actually shown us screenshots from uh, previous live letters regarding these visual upgrades for characters. Uh, the eyes look a lot more lively, they reflect light way better now. And uh, the upgrades are visible across all the different types of races, your favorite races. Uh, also, you notice like the, I think the texture of the face, right? It's also way better. You mentioned materials are also improved in terms of the way they look in the game and they prepared this video that you see on screen here. You can see lighting and you know reflective textures are also way more defined. Um, in terms of how the scene is lit, in terms of various cutscenes, it's also very evident that there's a bit more saturation, a bit more exposure. The light, you can see like clearly like the reflective texture of the metallic surfaces. That's very, very obvious. So not just materials, Yoshi P was also very proud to say that vegetation has also been improved in this game in this video here to basically showcase it. You can see um, clearly lighting again, very big part, right? Like it's a bit more exposure, um, a bit more saturated. And um, it's not just like randomly looking AI generated grass. There's actually a lot of um, definition to them, right? You can see the color pop, right? As well as um, just, just the contrast in terms of colors have been pretty much uh, overhauled. And again, you can see a bit of the mist fog um, kind of look that they also showed in the screenshot. So it's kind of nice. And Yoshi P said, if you compare the left and the right, you can see like the grass and, you know, obviously the, the flora and fauna on the right here just doesn't look very appealing in our G post screenshots. He said that is a problem of the O now. Going forward, it looked like the ones on the left. And there's a huge quality of life improvement, I guess. And he moved on to talk about system updates. And one of the loudest cheers in the room was for this item. Two dice per gear piece. He's basically increasing the customization you can have on each piece of gear in terms of how you die it. The true end game for Final Fantasy XIV just got way harder. Brand new glamour eyeglasses. A new type of gear, he said, that can be equipped alongside headgear. Alongside new eyeglasses, we will get an increase in limit in terms of furnishing to the cheers of the crowd who is very into housing. And your GP said, alongside the graphical upgrade, naturally there'll be higher demands for your system requirements for this game. On the left on screen here is basically the basic requirements that's needed to run the game. And on the right is their recommended settings to really get the maximum out of the brand new graphical overhaul. And he confirmed that there'll be PlayStation 4 support. He assured people not to worry. You don't have to upgrade to your PlayStation 5 to continue playing this game. And Yoshifi also announced a brand new system update. You can see something that is themed as the strategy board. This is similar to a toolbox that I think some of you raiders probably know well. And it's clear you can start putting schematics on an actual diagram in game. And I'm sure you can share it with your static or your party members. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sounds like you can use this as sequences for where to move in raids to solve certain mechanics. It's clear that this is a step towards making sure that the game is sufficient so people don't rely on third-party stuff. And just to cap off all his announcements for 7.0, he quickly covered there's one more big patch coming for Endwalker 6.5. And with that, the free trial will be expanded up to Stormblood. So you get additional value from just being a free player in Final Fantasy XIV. Tell your friends. And apparently Yoshi P also announced a collaboration with Fall Guys uh, themed after Final Fantasy XIV. You can see like people in the Namazu costume, the Gobu costume, the Chocobo costume. So you can see here, uh, Warriors of Light Fame Pass. And because it's a collaboration, there's also a Fall Guys crossover within the 14 game itself uh, in development, as you can see from in-game screenshots here. And here's the in-game Fall Guys segment with the Warriors of Light navigating through an obstacle course. 
people are memeing that this is Fall Guys Ultimate. As you can see from the schematics here, there's some uh, PvE mechanics that is familiar to you folks. Those will be making a return in the Fall Guys mini game within Final Fantasy XIV. And he confirmed this is coming to the Ghost Saucer. We'll get to play it in a patch 6.5x. So before 7.0 essentially. He then invited Phil Spencer on stage and it sounds like Final Fantasy XIV is coming to the Xbox. Because, you know, Microsoft and gaming and Phil Spencer. And there you have it, confirmation that 14 is coming to the Xbox. And that was pretty much everything that was announced at the NA FanFest for the keynote of Yoshi P's. The highlight of which is definitely the 7.0 teaser, Dawn Trail. And there'll be many more news coming down the line, especially with the FanFest still continuing into the weekend. So don't you worry, I will definitely keep you updated on this channel. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you haven't already. You don't want to miss the updates. Thanks for watching, I will see you soon.